Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining for today's afternoon session of 15 Google Docs tips in 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to struggle to get this one in 15 minutes, but I will do my best. Um, this is part of our Back to School series for the Google for Education team. My name is Chris Betcher. I work on that team and uh, let's launch into it. I know today is actually the first day back at school for some of you, so um, welcome back to 2023. Uh, all right, 15 Google Docs tips in 15 minutes. Uh, these are the tips I want to talk to you about. Um, there is a bunch of them there. I will whip through them as quick as I can, and this will be recorded so you can go back and watch it. And also, let me get back to that previous page. There is a, a, a link down the bottom there, bit.ly slash 15 docs tips, and there's a QR code if you want to use that. That will take you to this very slide deck that I'm using. And when you get to this slide deck, you'll have access to all of these things. Plus, if you go to um, each of these pages, there is a short video that I've embedded onto every single page just to uh, take you through that specific tip. I've tried to keep them to about a minute or so each. It's really hard sometimes, but um, did my best. All right, let's launch in. So set your page format. I'm going to kick out of this presentation so I can give you some live demos. So page format in Google Docs. Um, traditionally, Google Docs uh, looks like this and it has this white area on there. And if I just reduce the size of that slightly, you can see that it is actually designed to be a page. And this is a hangover from the original days when we went from typewriters to computers. Remember, we used to stick pieces of paper in the typewriter, and, um, and then we moved to computers. And for some reason, we kept that idea of a virtual page. I guess because in the early days of computers, we, we used it like a typewriter, and we printed it at the end. These days, of course, there's a lot of documents that never get printed. And so the idea of having a virtual page kind of doesn't make as much sense as it used to. So one of the things you can do if you want to in a Google Doc, in the File menu, in the Page Setup option, you have this option now to go to what's called pageless format. So if you're working on something that you probably will never print, um, it, you probably don't need to think about virtual pages. So you can switch to this pageless format. And let me just show you what it does. It just, instead of having a sort of a virtual page, it just gives you this big, broad canvas. And it's a long, continuous page, no page breaks and anything else. Uh, so for some documents, it makes a lot more sense. And you can switch it back if you want as well. Just the same thing. Just go page setup and switch back to page view, uh, just like that. You will notice that um, when you go to page view, sorry, the pages view of the page, <laughs> um, you have some options like whether it's portrait or landscape and whether you've got margins and what size the paper is, all that sort of stuff. You don't get those options in pageless view because they just don't make any sense in pageless view. It's not a page, okay? I'll switch this back to normal page view just uh, for the sake of it and I'll switch us back to normal view. Okay, so that is um, the first tip which is uh, uh, set up your page format. Second tip is use smart chips. Smart chips are relatively new in Google Docs and it works like this. If I type an at symbol, like so, um, it pops up this menu. So just go to Google Docs and type an at symbol and you'll get this list of stuff. And you get things like people and building blocks and files and dates and events. So these are things that are included in Google Docs. Now I can tell you the difference between a smart chip and just regular text. If I, if I go in there and type at, and I start typing, say my own name, right? So here is my other Google account, right? And I click on that and it pops up now, that's just not the two words, my name. It actually has this uh, outline around it to tell me it's a smart chip. And embedded in that smart chip is a whole bunch of smart information. Instead of it just being two words, if I hover over it, you can see it brings up this little card. I can do things like send an email to that person or create a chat or a video call or add a meeting. I've got all sorts of things I can do. The other thing the smart chip's done is it's realized if I'm adding someone to the document, they probably need access to this document. So I can actually just share it. So in case I forgot to share it, the smart chip is reminding me. That's why it's smart. Um, there's some other smart chips you can add as well. So if I just go down here and just show you here, for example, if I type an at symbol and, oops, sorry, an at symbol, shift that, um, and I say I want to embed the, this document. So, well, there it is right there, right? So 15 docs tips, so if I add that, it'll put that in there as a clickable link. If I click on it, it actually has the document stored in it. So smart chips have stuff behind them. They're not just pieces of text. Uh, and they're really good. Now, if you want to know more about smart chips, you go insert smart chips. And right now, you can do people, files, calendar events, and places. There are a few interesting new things coming to the smart chips that I can't tell you about yet because they're super secret, but you can expect to see them pretty soon. Uh, and I'm actually pretty excited about them. So really interesting smart chips coming down the pipeline. 
Um, I won't dig into it right now, but as well as smart chips, do take a moment to have a look at building blocks as well, just in case you've never seen them. They are kind of an extension of smart chips. So have a look at those two things. They're pretty unique to Google Docs, uh, and they really can save you a lot of time and energy. All right, next tip is this voice typing. Many of you probably have seen this, but in case you have not, voice typing. I might just get rid of this stuff. Uh, let me just select all that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'll get rid of all that. So I have a nice, nice clean page. Uh, you can go to the tools menu and select voice typing and it pops up this little microphone on the side. By default, it will go to whatever language your computer is set to. Mine's set to English UK, uh, but I should probably set this to Australian English. So, uh, English Australia, there you go. Um, it will work with most languages, but it's best if you set it to the language you actually speak. And then when I click the microphone button, it will start listening to me and I can do things like this. Hello, this is me talking to my computer, and now it's taking my words and turning them into text. And so this is a much more efficient way of typing, especially if you're a terrible typist like me. Full stop, new paragraph. <sighs> All right, so being able to type directly in your document with your voice, super handy, obviously, if, for saving time and energy, but also for students who maybe aren't great typists or who struggle to get their ideas on the page. Um, if you can get them to type with their voice, that might be a useful thing to do. All right, so that is built right into Google Docs. Next tip is defining words using the dictionary. And for that, I'm just going to show you this document right here. So here is a document I've created. It has a whole bunch of information about Anzac Day. Uh, you might occasionally come to a word in a document that you're not sure what it means, So especially if you're a student, right? So uh, for this, the word evacuated, for example, you're not sure what that word means. You can always come to the tools menu and say, uh, where is it here? It's dictionary, right? So choose dictionary. And a panel opens up on the right-hand side, and it has the definition. It's a verb. This is what it means. This is another meaning for it, and so on. So if you'd like to know, all that dictionary is just built into Google Docs. Okay, So any word, just select it. Go to the Tools menu. Uh, or if you don't want to go to the Tools menu, the other word you can do, thing you can do, if you right-click on a piece of text, right-click it, and just go down to Define. And it should. Over there, there you go. There's the definition of the word peninsula. All right, so that is the dictionary built right into Google Docs. Handy, handy, handy. All right, next tip is that we can create diagrams and sketches as drawings. Goodness me, this is I think this is a great one. Um, one of the things I used to really get annoyed with in the previous word processor I used to use prior to Google Docs was if I wanted to put a diagram on the page, it was needlessly complicated, and I had to make it up out of shapes and bits and pieces. And if you then typed more stuff into that page, the diagram would often fall apart. It got really annoying. One of the things you can do in Google Docs is to go insert drawing, and you have two options there. You can insert a new drawing, or if you've already got one in your Google Drive, you can use it. I'll show you both. If I go new drawing, it creates this little canvas, and whatever I do on this canvas here, so if I go and say I want to make a little diagram, let's say I, I'll, put a, I'll put a box like that, and maybe... Uh, let's just create another box down there, and maybe I want a little flow chart sort of thing. So I'll go here and get an arrow, and I'll, I'll draw an arrow between the two. Right. So I'm just a diagram, a flow chart, whatever it might be, and any anything at all you can create. Sorry, my Google Home is making noises. Uh, and then when I click out of that, it actually puts that diagram directly on the page. I like that when I resize the diagram, it resizes neatly, including the thickness of the lines. Everything scales with that, so it's nice and neat. So that's one way you can put a diagram in a page. And if you need to go back and add more to the diagram, you can hit the Edit button and just make a change. Like Let's make this box uh, instead of blue. Sorry, let's click on that. Make that Instead of blue, let's make that, I don't know, red. Okay, and we say save and close, and you can see now the diagram on the page changes as well. So really easy to add diagrams. And I mentioned to you that you can also add existing diagrams. So insert drawing from Drive. That will take me into my Google Drive and show me all of the Google Drawings files that I may have ever created. And here's a nice one here. This is a science experiment my students did. And you can see, uh, when you do that, by the way, you can link to it or just insert it as it is. I like linking to it, because then it means if you go back and change the original diagram, it will automatically update in the Google Doc. That's super handy. So when you do that, it will just drop that diagram in just like that. So if you want to put diagrams and things into a Google Doc, definitely use that drawing tool, uh, or do it over in Google Drawings and just bring it in that way. But it's a much neater way to put diagrams and things into a Google Doc. All right, so next tip 
is, uh, what's this one? This is check the word count. Uh, let's go back to our wordy document again. So this is my Anzac Day document. I wonder how many words are in here. You can find that in the tools menu. There's a word count option and it'll bring up this little box and it'll tell you it's one page, 608 words, 3,613 characters and so on. I like the fact that you can tick this box and it puts that little word count down in the bottom corner for you down here and it's always visible. So as I'm typing on the document, I'm literally seeing how many words I'm creating on the fly. Uh, you can also click on the up arrow there and get all that other information if you want it, characters and pages and so on. And I do also like the fact that if I want to know how many words in this sentence, if I select the sentence, it actually tells me how many words are in the selected piece of text as well. So uh, it could be useful. And if you don't want it, you just hide that and it gets rid of it. So that's word count right there in your Google Doc. Um, citations and bibliography. This is an interesting one. Did I put my book somewhere? Uh, we'll, go, we'll do it this way. So I'm going to go back to this document here. And in the, let's say I've written an essay and I've read some books and I've got some in sources and um, I, I can see we have some teacher librarian friends in the document in the in the call today. So you'll like this one. Uh, if I go to the tools menu and say citations, it pops up a link on the side here where I've already pre-added some citations. Now, to add a citation source, I click on it and I choose, is it a book, a website, a journal article, a newspaper article, film, TV, whatever it might be. So let's say it's a book. Well, how did I access that book? Was it by print, website, online database? Okay, let's say it was an actual print book. Great, what was the ISBN number? Uh, I'm gonna do this for you right here. I'm just gonna grab a book. I've actually already put this one in, but we'll do it again. So the ISBN in this is 9780262042871. Okay, so I put that in there and say search. It will search the database and tell me, okay, this book is The Joy of Search by Dan Russell, uh, published by MIT Press in 2019. It just does that look up for me. Now I can hit continue. And I can add to that. So if there's additional details, like you know the addition or the volume number or whatever, I can add that as well. Okay, but I'm just going to go with that and add that source. Now I've actually put that in twice there by mistake. So we'll just get rid of one of them. So let's delete that. Okay. Um, so I've got my things in there. Right, that's how you put citations in. Uh, you can add as many as you like. They can be books, websites, whatever. When you're done and you've finished your essay, and your teachers ask you to add a bibliography at the end. All you do is put your cursor in position and say insert works cited and it will automatically add that bibliography for you from the citation list. You do have the option up here, by the way, of going MLA, APA or Chicago. Uh, if you use one of the one something other than those three, then unfortunately that's the only ones that are in here at the moment. But if you have a request for others, by the way, let me just show you if you have a request for something in a Google Doc or sorry, in Google generally, if there's something in our tools that you would like to see changed or fixed or updated, go to the help menu and say help docs improve. And you can always fill in this little form here, which will pop up and just fill in a little thing. That we take all these suggestions very seriously. So if you'd like to make suggestions on things that we don't have, that's how you do it. All right, so anyway, that is the citations uh, tool in Google Docs. Hopefully that's going to be useful to you. Let me go back to our tips. Our next tip is to translate into another language. Let's say I've got this lovely um, Anzac Day thing here. Let's just say, for example, I'm doing a project with a school in Turkey and we're both learning about Anzac Day. That'd be an interesting project, wouldn't it? We could be talking to a collaborative project together. Well, let's say I want this document in Turkish. Easy to do. Go to the tools menu, go down to translate document, and I can pick from one of, I, I don't know how many in here, I think it's about 80 or so languages. And you can pick any language you like, All right? I'm gonna pick Turkish uh, just because. And so I do that. And when I say translate, watch what happens. It will actually open a new tab. It will leave my original Google Doc alone. It won't change it, but it creates a copy. And there is the Turkish version. I used to use this all the time with students where, you know, I'd send letters home to parents and I'd translate them into, you know, Chinese or, Arabic or whatever it might be before I sent them home, depending on you know the language spoken at home. But lots and lots of uses for how you might use that translation in the classroom. People always say, oh, you know, but is it is it perfect? I don't know, probably not. But everyone I know who speaks another language who does this tells me it's close enough and pretty good. So I will I will defer to them on that one. All right, so that's translation. 
uh, we have here. What's next? Uh, mindful of time. Going as fast as I can. Insert images using uh, from the web. Okay, if I want to insert an image into a Google Doc, let's go to this blank one. Let's say I want a picture. I'm doing a project on elephants, and I want to insert a picture of an elephant. Insert image from the web, and it opens up a panel on the side here, and I can just simply type in elephant, and it will find all those pictures. I go, that's the one I want, and I say insert. The time I just took there to put a picture into a document was what, less than 10 seconds? Compared to what, <laughs> prior to this, I used to teach a lot and I'd get students to put pictures in and they'd be off searching for pictures for half an hour before they eventually settled on one, right? This is a much quicker, easier way. And if you get a picture using that method I just showed you there, it's a Creative Commons or copyright free image. So you don't have to worry about copyright so long as you insert it from the search the web tool here you'll get copyright free images and really quick and easy too. Uh, the next tool is the other way you can put pictures in and that is images from a webcam. So let me just show you that. Let's just say you're a student and you've made something, you've done your cooking class, you've made a cupcake or you've gone to, I don't know, you've done a woodwork class and you've made something in woodwork or you've just done a piece of written work and you want to put it into a Google Doc as part of your project documentation. Well, you can go insert image from the camera and it will then use the webcam on your computer. You can see there I am, hello. Um, it will actually add you as a webcam, and then you can, I don't know, hold up the thing. There's, there's the book I just did, by the way. Excellent book, I'll show you that. Um, so whatever it is you want to do, you can, you can add that via the webcam. It's often much simpler than trying to take it on a camera or a phone and then figure out how do I get it from the camera to the computer. Like, it just saves a lot of messing around. Uh, I like that picture, so I'll do that, and it will take that and insert directly into the document, just like that. That is built into Google Docs. You don't have to do anything else. You've got a camera, or as long as you've got a webcam on your computer, which most do these days. And uh, side tip, that's an excellent book. Highly recommended, The Joy of Search. All right, that there is um, inserting from a webcam. Next tip is uh, using styles. Oh, my goodness, I love styles. I don't know. Oh, Styles exist in other word processes as well, but I've never found them as easy to use as the way it works in Google Docs. Let me show you what I mean. So this document that I've got here, this Anzac Day document, has a number of paragraphs into it. And if you look carefully, like that there, what does Anzac Day stand for? That's actually a little heading. There's another little heading here. Hot tip for you in Google Docs, if you hold down the control key, you can select multiple pieces of text at once. So rather than format one thing at a time, you can actually control click uh, so I'm just going control, click, click, click. Sorry, control, click, click, click. Control, click, click, click. All right, and I think there's one more. There you go, click, click, click. So I've just selected all of those pieces of text. And now when I apply something to them, like I'll go to this style list here and choose, I'm going to choose heading two, right? So I choose heading two and boom. And it applies that style to all of those pieces of text in one go, right? Now that's a time saver. But here's the thing. A style, what it really is, is a collection of text attributes. What do I mean by that? So a text attribute is like what size is the text, whether it's bold, italic, or underlined, what color is it? Is it left aligned or right aligned? All of those things, all of those attributes for text form a style. A style groups them all together. So instead of, I want to change this text to 17 point bold, italic, blue, instead of having to go and make all of those changes individually, all I gotta do is make a style that contains those and it changes everything. I'll show you what I mean. Let's choose this first one and I want it to be bold. I want it to be say 18 point and I want it to be, uh, let's make it blue uh, and that'll do for now, right? So I've made some changes. What I can do once I've made the changes is go to the style list here, down to the heading that I've used and say update heading two to match. In other words, make all the instances of heading two match the current selection. If I do that, now they all change. So they just ripple through the document now. That keeps it really consistent because it means a heading you've got on page one is going to be exactly the same as the heading you've got on page 27 because you've used a style and you haven't just tried to remember which attributes you've applied. So try and use these styles. They are a huge time saver. Uh, all right, that is styles. Uh, I could talk for ages on styles, but I will keep it brief. Um, choose your favorite fonts. Uh, here's a nice tip for you as well. If I go in here and go the quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. I love how it completes that sentence for me. Um, I'll just make that a bit bigger so you can see it. Let's bump that font size up. It's a little. Okay, so that's font, standard font, Arial, right? 
if you go to the font list, you know you've got a bunch of fonts you can choose from, okay? But this is a web font system. So there are actually thousands of fonts available. Well, how do you get the one you want? You go to this thing that says more fonts, pops up a box. On the left, this list here, is a list of all the possible fonts that are available. There are thousands and thousands of them. And the list on the right is the list of the ones that you've chosen. So do you ever look at your computer sometimes and you pop up the font list and you go, oh my God, I've got like 200 fonts there and I'm not gonna use 198 of them, right? Um, so what you can do here is you can say, okay, well, I don't ever use finger paint, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I don't ever use ranches, so I'll get rid of that. But you know, this one here called, um, uh, Anton, I really like that one, so I'll add that, and I'll add this one called Bevers New, and they go into my list. So now when I look at my list, if I go down here, uh, and I look at here, you can see I've got, uh, where are we here? Um, uh, where are they? Mon was I in Monterey? Did I click save? Maybe I didn't click save. I don't know. No, I mustn't have clicked save. Sorry, I'm going too fast. Um, but yeah, you can put your own fonts in there and have your own fonts. Now, I want to point out too that recently, I'm going to claim this is one of my achievements while I've been at Google. Uh, I managed to get the team to build the foundation fonts for every state and territory. So if you want the New South Wales or Queensland or South Australia or Tasmanian or whatever font, you've got it right there. And so you can now have access to the foundation fonts in Google Docs. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Uh, um, yes. Uh, so, yes, if you want to put those in, the way you find them, by the way, go to the more fonts list, list and just search for EDU. Because we tried to make it easy, we put the word EDU in front of all of them. So when you search for that now, they will all pop up in that list and you just pick which ones you want. I've got more than I need there, but, um, yeah, that's how you add them. All right, so that's adding your own fonts. Uh, uh, collaborating with others. Um, I not, don't need to spend too much time on this one. You mostly probably know that if you hit this share button up here, you can share a document with individual people. You can see this is shared with me and my, my other self, my other alternative person, um, two different accounts. But if you want to share with someone, so I'll share this with like Kimberly, oops, Kimberly, and I do that and I decide whether she's going to be an editor or a viewer or a comment, I'm going to say editor and say send, that will just send her a message. I won't actually go through with that because it just annoys her, right? But, um, uh, you can add multiple people to a document and work together. That is really the beauty of Google Docs and something that it's done right from day one that does really well and that is allows multiple people to all work together on the same document at the same time uh, and allows that sort of team collaboration. I believe you can have up to 100 people working on a document at the same time. All right, and I think we're nearly at the end, uh, almost two more. Um, send a document for approval. This is a brand new feature. It is only available if you are in a workspace plus domain uh, and most schools in australia now i think are moving to plus so uh you probably do have this um if you ever have a document and you need to send it to someone for approval so maybe the principal needs to look at it or the head of curriculum needs to look at it in order before it can be sent out to parents what you can do is create the document and then go to the file menu down to approvals okay and again you'll only see that if you're on the plus edition of workspace and it'll open up this panel on the side here and come on, come on, here we go. Okay, so you can make a request for an approval on this document, and I might click on that and say, who do I need to approve this? Uh, Kimberly. So I'll add her name there, and I can add multiple people. Let's do Steve as well, right? So we've got two people that need to approve this document before it's allowed to be released. I can leave them a message. I can put a due date on it if there's a deadline. I can allow them to edit if I want to. I'm just gonna say send request. That request then goes to those two people, and you'll see over on there, first of all, it's telling me they need access to it. So I better give them access, otherwise they won't be able to see it. Um, and that will then go over there. And you can see what's happened here is there's an approval process pending where I have requested both Kimberly and Steve to approve this document. The little clock says that I'm waiting on their response. As soon as they've responsed, responsed, responded, uh, I will get a message to say that they have approved it or rejected it, they have that option too. And then once that happens, the document will be locked and they won't be able to make any further changes. This is an amazing um, feature in Google Docs now for that process that happens all the time in schools where we're constantly creating documents that probably someone needs to sign off on before we can actually send it out to whoever it is. So that process built right in now, really simple, really easy. The document gets locked. If someone tries to change the document after it's approved, 
it will need to go through the approval process again because obviously it's changed it's no longer the thing that was approved and our final tip and oh, i've gone over time but my apologies is publishing your document to the web let's say you've created a document let's say it's this one here this anzac day document uh oh, i might have done this one earlier today when i was testing let me just check um um um, 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 um share here let me just check that I have not already done this. I have. I'm just going to stop publishing so I can show you how you make it published. Uh, so here's how it works. Here's how it works. So you've got a document, and you might want to share this document with lots of people. Maybe it's an information sheet for parents or something, uh, an FAQ about the school, whatever. And, and you, you think there's lots of people that might want to see it, and it's kind of public information, so it's not a secret. What you can do is go to the file menu, say share, and publish to the web. And what it does, just with one button click, just hit publish, that's all you got to do, right? And it will turn that Google Doc, it will create a version of that Google Doc as a web page. So if I copy that URL now and just go to another tab here and show you and paste that in and go to that link, this is that document now as a web page, okay? So it's, it is the Google Doc, but it is also a web version of the Google Doc that anyone can see. Um, and it's linked back to the document. You can see up here in the corner, it says updated automatically every five minutes. So if you go and make some changes to the original document, it will, it, within a couple of minutes, it'll be reflected on the web page as well. Super useful for people who aren't necessarily good at making web pages, but they can now create a web page. And so long as they can edit the Google Doc, they can edit the web page because it all happens automatically. All right. Wow. I did go over. My apologies, but um, there's a lot there to cover. Uh, that is 15 tips in slightly more than 15 minutes. My apologies. Um, if you'd like to access these, I've put them together as a YouTube playlist, so you can do it that way. You can also go and use this link here to grab the slides that I just used. And like I said, on each of those slides is a little YouTube video of that particular tip. Um, and hopefully you guys found that useful. I am going to stop the recording now. Please, um, uh, if you haven't already, we've got um, our Learn with Google webinars. You'll get an email after after this um, session is over, and it's got some information on our Learn with Google webinars. We run them once a month, every third Thursday of the month, and we try and talk about something educational and also some latest what's new with Google stuff as well. And we start them in February, and we run until November. All right. Guys, have a wonderful uh, 2023 when school goes back, um, I guess more officially next week when all the kids start coming back. Uh, and uh, my thoughts are with you. Uh, I know how exciting and terrifying New Year's are. But um, have fun. See you later. Bye.